Yeah, so all the hometown rising and bourbon and beyond and all that stuff got canceled out. The you know, the Bardstown Bourbon Festival now, the you know, the the rest of the those those events that happened around the other big events in Louisville are all canceled now. I don't know what's next, Mike. Well, Christmas, they're gonna cancel Christmas on us, Jim. How can they cancel Christmas? I don't know. No shopping at the store? Well, I would think there'd be, you'd still be able to shop, but what about Santa Claus for kids going to see Santa Claus? Did you ever go see Santa Claus as a kid? Santa Claus is banned due to COVID. I bet you money that's what's going to happen. Welcome to another trip down the bourbon road with your hosts, Jim and Mike. So grab a glass of your favorite bourbon and kick back. We would like to thank Tommy and Gwen Mitchell from Logheads Home Center for supporting this episode of the bourbon road. Find out more about their fine rustic furniture at logheadshomecenter.com. Hello, everybody. I'm Jim Shannon. I'm Mike Hyatt. And this is the Bourbon Road. And Mike, once again, we are sitting at Jephthah Bend Farm in front of your fireplace. But where's Woodrow? Yeah, he's a little hyped up today, so <laughs> I, had to, I had to put him in the laundry room. Oh, poor guy. He loves being on podcasts. He does, If I, but he would, he'll be running around crazy today. Okay. Well, next time, Woodrow. Woodrow had fun last night. Yeah. I had to pull the neighbor out of the creek. His side by side pretty much fell over on a cliff, but it was the back end of it was in the creek. And the banks are so muddy from the rain that we've had the past couple of weeks that he couldn't get it out. So it was just spinning, spinning tires trying to get up the hill or well his is belt driving too, so that belt got wet and oh, just yeah. it, no power to it. So I took my side by side over there at eight o'clock last night and hooked a bunch of uh tow straps to it. And then I took and used a tree on the bank, and I ran up the tow rope around the tree back to my side by side and pulled him up. There you go. It took a little bit. And, and he said, this isn't going to work. And I said, well, watch his country boy work. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good neighbor. No doubt about it. Yeah. his He's got two or four boys, actually. They're all homeschooled. They run up and down Jephthah Bend Creek here, and or Jephthah, Jephthah Creek. And uh, I just love them to death. They're just great boys. Super mannered, I guess would be the word for it. Well mannered. Well mannered. Yeah. They're just, uh, you can't help but love a kid like that. Yeah. And the parents are great. So he called me and said, Hey, Mike, can you come help me out? And, you know, you know how I am. Sure. I've been over backwards for somebody. Yeah, absolutely. Could. Well, Mike, what's, what's kind of the story with today's show? I just want we catch up, talk about Bourbon Heritage Month because this is, kind of the end of bourbon heritage month for us and it's been a little weird hasn't it 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 has been weird i mean i mean we're still getting the releases stuff's still hitting the shelves and that's good but as far as gatherings get-togethers celebrations um you know events things like that related to bourbon just not happening yeah and i think people are kind of a little burnout on the whole social media thing where we're having virtual tastings, we're having these virtual virtual events. People just kind of burn out on it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I am too. So, I mean, I understand. So, yeah, I mean, if there's an event, uh, there has to be a pretty good reason for me to want to attend it virtually right now. I hate to say that because a lot of what we do is on air, right? Sure. But, um, yeah, I'm just, you know, just getting kind of burnt out because my job, on the other hand, is remote. So I'm in those remote meetings all day, right? And then uh, then if we do an event with our roadies or something on Facebook or something else like it, that's remote. And then the things that we enjoy to do, you know, they're remote. So, yeah, I don't know, kind of tired of it. Definitely tired of it. Yeah, we both, you know, you're a web designer, I guess what you'd say programming 
and you're sitting in front of a computer all day, and then I sit in front of a computer all day doing search and rescue stuff, and people wouldn't might not think that, but in my office there's screens everywhere. Looks like I, looks like uh, what was that? What was that? War games. War games. Yeah, <laughs> a little mini war games. Yeah, so we're both just living in front of a computer, and we have a regular life to live too. So, and we want to go to those kinds of events that we're missing out on and everybody else is missing out on them too. So yeah, I just figured we sit down here and um, our last episode or two episodes ago, we talked about the basics of bourbon. And one of the things we kind of hit on a little bit was finished bourbon. There wasn't enough time in the show to really go into all the different styles of bourbon, I guess, or styles of types of bourbon. So we would have had to have like five or six shows, I think to, really touch on everything so we kind of just breezed right by uh finished bourbons yeah and then so i mean we've been talking about finished bourbons for a while we mean you have that discussion back and forth about what it really is is this a bourbon well no it's not a bourbon it's it is a bourbon but it's not a bourbon it's it's a finished bourbon it's a bourbon finished in or by or through Enough. some other some other method yeah so i have two i think they're two great expressions and we really haven't had either one of them on the show so i said let me pull off these off the shelf and let's go ahead and drink some of it and talk about them yeah so not only have we not had these expressions we haven't had these brands on the show yet no we you know we both had these brands before and i actually you bought me a a pour of one of them at a bar at third turn brewing with at the derby we were watching the derby there with our wives and I was like, man, I got to have a bottle of this right here. I, it was that good to me. Um, it is a big boy pour. And that, we'll talk about that one on the second one. But the first one, we we need to get to the whiskey, don't Let's we? Let's get to the whiskey. Yeah. So what's the first one we got? Well, the first one we have is the Rabbit Hole Derringer. And uh, it is a 93 proof finished whiskey. It's a, it's a weeder, Mike. You're going to love this one. This man. one is this one's a weeder. And uh, it is uh, as a secondary finish in Pedro Jimenez casks, P- PX Sherry casks. And, you know, there's a number of expressions out there that use the PX casks for finishing. Uh, so there's a lot of company on the shelf with people that are doing similar to this. Um, but, you know, this is a beautiful bottle. It's got a great label on it. It's sitting at a decent proof of 93. It is a weeded whiskey. So the mash bill on this is 68 corn, 18 wheat, and 14 malted barley. Wow. So it's got it's got a decent wheat and a decent malted barley content to it. Still 68% corn mash bill, though. You think I'm going to love it? I, I think you might. <laughs> it's made right here in Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah. we've I've been to Rabbit Hole before, um, and I, I've, I've talked about that experience. But to be fair to Rabbit Hole... I had really bad acid reflux that day, like horrible acid reflux. And I was trying to do everything to get rid of it. And we'd already had the tour set up. So I went anyways, big mistake on my part because the whiskey didn't taste good. I don't know if you've ever had acid reflux, Jim, but it's a terrible thing, isn't it? Well, I mean, if I've had it, I wouldn't be drinking whiskey. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you have an attack of it almost. Yeah. And it, it feels like, your chest is just burning up and then it starts coming up a little bit and it, it's horrible. All right. Well, rabbit hole, welcome to the bourbon road. This is your first appearance on the bourbon road and you are a local distillery for us. We just haven't gotten around to you yet. Down there on the urban bourbon trail. On the urban bourbon trail, downtown Louisville. Well, let's nose this thing, Jim. All right. Well, while you're nosing it, Mike, I want to take a look at this color. I'm going to say that it's, it's definitely got a reddish hue to it. Uh, it's a, it's a, Golden amber, but it does have kind of a reddish hue to it. Now, I don't know if that reddish hue comes from the wine cask. It very well may. But nice color to it. Now, this doesn't have an age statement on it, but we do know it says a straight, right? So we know it's more than two years old. Yeah, it's a straight bourbon whiskey finished in PX Sherry casks. So, And that's the best way to say it. So let's just get this out of the way right now. Whether you consider a finished bourbon a bourbon or not, the proper way to do it is the way Rabbit Hole has. By saying a straight bourbon whiskey finished in PX Sherry casks fully describes what it is. There's no nothing being hidden there. They're not pulling any punches. It is what it's labeled as. 
Yeah, so same thing their neighbors down the road do. Exactly. Angels Envy. Angels Envy. They they do the same thing. They, they're they saying it the right way. So I, I appreciate that. We've talked about that, that transparency. Here's exactly what you're getting. So I, I love it. <clears throat> this has um, some raisin in it. Some floral notes, maybe like f- fresh rose petals. Yeah, it's definitely got a very sweet nose, um, a, uh, a fruity kind of nose to it. But the caramel and vanilla are front and center on it. But I'm picking up a little bit of uh, like pear or peach as well. And that may be from the from the barley. I don't know. Well, that wheat or that barley <clears throat> always gives you that floral, that that ripened fruit taste. You know, I it's a beautiful nose. I hope the taste matches, the palate matches the nose on this. I hope you didn't beat me to it, Jim. Gosh, well, it. you were you were very suggestive there. You said the palate matches the nose. I it like caused my hand to bring it up to my lips. Yeah, the nose was really balanced on it. I think the palate's pretty balanced as well. It's got a nice uh, upfront flavor to it. I'm getting a little bit more of the cask influence and a little bit of dryness on the back end. You know these these casks. Uh, they make their way all the way from Spain. So sherry casks from Spain, you know, they actually start, the, the casks themselves start out in the U.S. The wood starts out in the U.S. Sure. Makes its way to Spain, made into a cask by a cooper, and then they're filled with sherry, and then they're aged, and then once emptied, then they make their way back to the U.S. to be filled with bourbon. So for our listeners out there that are just, Whiskey drinkers that never picked up a bottle of sherry before. What is sherry? Sherry is a wine, more or less, but it's a special type of wine. Like more syrupy, more. Yeah. So a sherry is is a fortified wine, much the same as a port wine is a it's a fortified wine. Now, port wines are, you know, from Portugal, but the um, the sherry, this this particular sherry is a white grape. I think by the time the barrels make their way back to rabbit hole, they're about four years old. I think that's pretty neat that somebody took that time to think that process through and and come up something like this. The palette on this is beautiful. It's got a little bit of spice to it. I was surprised by it because that's not the what weeders are known for is that spice. So maybe is that that barrel spice that I'm getting in this? Yeah, I'm getting a baking spice from it. I, I mean, I feel like I've got a nice... You know, a nice fruity front end, a little bit sweet, and then I'm getting that baking spice on the mid palate. There's plenty of caramel and plenty of uh, uh, vanilla there that you would expect from a bourbon, but on the back end, Mike, it kind of just drops off for me. I mean, I'm not getting a, a big long finish on it, and yeah, it, I mean, it's a little dry back there too. Yep. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's you know it. It's a good bottle of bourbon or finished bourbon. It's just, uh, like you said, it just drops off the cliff kind of, mm-hmm. and there's nothing there. There's not, it's not oily. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the legs on the glass are pretty decent. I mean, it, but you know, it just in the palate, it doesn't really, doesn't really hang around with that flavor for very long, but what is there is fairly balanced and flavorful. I do like it. I think that this, uh, if, if you're a, person who likes finished bourbons i'd say try it i'd say give it a shot so Uh, what's the msrp on this this is uh right around 70 to 80 dollar range i think it depends on where you get it from it that's not bad for a finished bourbon if you went and got some angels envy it's gonna be a little bit cheaper but a lot bigger distillery and then you'll see some other ones that are a lot more expensive so that's that's not a bad price for it. I don't think so. Um, but maybe that's not everybody's pocketbook. If if you can't afford a bottle of it, you know, and you're at a whiskey bar and you see it, it's probably a good uh, good thing to, hey, I'll take a pour of that. Sure. You know, a special pour. Um, the name Derringer, though, when, when we first said it, that reminds me of the Derringer pistol. You know, that just isn't the Derringer pistol is a one-shot pistol. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> really small, something you'd put in your boot or in your pocket. Sure. 
Uh, but something from days gone by. People don't carry derringers anymore. <laughs> uh, that's something that was uh, probably fairly popular 50 years ago, 80 years ago, 100 years ago. Poker players had them. Yeah. Yeah. Put that little sucker out under the table and you try to cheat me on cards, I'm going to shoot you with my little derringer. Who, what, was that, what was that show? Wild Wild West? Yeah. Remember remember the fella that uh, he had the, the gun in, on, on that thing in his sleeve? But he just popped out. Popped out. On- <laughs> it might have been a Derringer. I don't know. That's a little bitty pistol. I don't I don't know. But that's what I, in my mind, what Derringer is. And I'm not sure why they came up with that name, Derringer, for this whiskey. Um, I'm hoping it's not like a, just a one or two shot at this and we're done. But- yeah, I don't know. Well, anyway, you know. Rabbit Hole's been pretty good about coming out with uh, unique expressions uh, on a timely basis. So you can always expect something to come on the shelf from Rabbit Hole that's new and different. Um, I don't know how often they do it, uh, but I would imagine uh, I, I've seen probably three or four in the past couple of years that have grabbed my attention. They just, they just haven't made it to the show yet. Uh, you know, we're busy guys. We've got a lot of expressions to look at. But this one, I'm glad we had it. I'd say if you're a wine drinker or let's say your spouse is not a bourbon drinker and you want to try to introduce them to the bourbon world, this might be a good bourbon for them to try just to get them into that tasting. I know Vivian loves this. Yeah, particularly if they like a drier wine, I think this might be something that they'll because this does have kind of a drying effect to it, I think. Yeah, as it sits on my palate a little bit, and you know, it sits in the glass, and I'm sipping on it, I'm getting a little bit more of that tobacco taste, that you know, just that beech nut, I guess, mm-hmm. that smell to it, where it's on your palate, and just that rich, rich leathery. Um, but it's not like you said; it just drops off, though. It does, but th- this has taken on a lot of influence from the barrels that it was in. There's no doubt about it. This has sucked up the goodness out of those barrels. And, uh, yeah, I think it's balanced. I think the nose and the palate are both fairly balanced. They are a little different, but they're complementary of each other. I just think the finish is where it lacks a little bit. But you know what? We've seen that before in finished whiskeys, right? We've seen that where they, 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 they're they great up front. They're great on the nose, but the finish just doesn't quite hang. Yeah. So I, I, I heard that you were hanging out with one of the old uh, Bourbon Road guys the other day. Yeah, old Randy, uh, original co-host to the Bourbon Road. He was uh, he visited yesterday, spent the night with us, and uh, we had a good old time. We drank a little Weller 12, and uh, I'm trying to think of what else we had. Had a little old Carter. So he was going for the big bottles. <laughs> <laughs> of course he was. He lives in Virginia <laughs> now where, where the whiskey isn't plentiful. But he is uh, he's working on uh, some music projects with some pretty big artists. And uh, hopefully we're going to hear an album from him here in the next year or so. Uh, pretty excited for him. He seems pretty excited about it. He's working with some pretty amazing people. So, so he's just gallivanting around the country. and Yes. Going here, going there, laying down tracks, you know, hobnobbing with the, the music people. He's doing what he loves, you know. He's not working per se, like a full-time job anymore. He's semi-retired, I guess. On sabbatical is what he likes to call it. Sabbatical. Is that what happens when you retire? That, you that's what doctors do. He, you know, he's a PhD. <laughs> so that's what those PhDs do. They go on sabbatical. Yeah, it seems like we both um, lately, you guys had a retirement party over at your house. And a week ago, two weeks ago, a good friend of mine, he retired from the Coast Guard after 30 years. And it's just weird how we're in that point of our lives where it just seems like, you know, that's our point of our lives, I guess. People are retiring and um, some people are passing away. I had a good friend that passed away this past week and it, it affected me more than I thought it would. I kind of, yeah, I wasn't really sorry I was, to hear that, Mike. I wasn't yeah. depressed, but it, it put me in a funk. Um, you know, when you, somebody dies, she was young. She was only 49 years old and, and, uh, not to get all sappy on here and stuff, but to watch somebody die at that age is not a good feeling. But I expect as I move on in life that more and more of that's going to happen to me. Um, you know, it's just part of life. It is. Dying is a part of life. We're all uh, we're all given birth with a death sentence. 
Yeah. That's unfortunate to think of it that way, but that's the way it is. So every day you do get, you're blessed. Yeah. I, you know, everybody always said you're going to, you, you're born, you pay taxes and you die. Well, I know a lot of people don't pay taxes. So <laughs> you, you're born and you die. I guess on to another subject is uh, we just went over a thousand people in roadies in our private Facebook group. A big accomplishment for both of us. A big accomplishment for Adam and Jason, our two moderators. They've been great at it. If you're a roadie and you're listening to this, thank you very much for being a part of our family. Um, You know, that your reasons why we do this right here. Nate Smith, um, we've actually both met him before yeah he uh lives over there in danville and he works at the copper and oak over there a place that we both love to eat at and drink at um his sister works there too she's a manager so you know nate thanks for being our thousand thousandth listener or thousand brody i guess and i i'm gonna send him a couple of samples uh saying thanks from the, me and you jim that's great because that's what it means to be a roadie right share Mother- your whiskey yeah, matter of fact, I'm going to send him these two right here. There you go. Awesome. Well, we haven't revealed what the number two is yet, <laughs> so don't say it. <laughs> so, you know, I think that's, I guess the sky's the limit for our group. Do you think? Or Yeah, I mean, we're growing organically. Uh, we're growing by word of mouth. Uh, we're not out there um, purchasing ads and doing events to build the roadies growth we want the roadies to grow by recommendation and by well obviously listeners we talk about the the bourbon roadies on our show we figure if you're listening to our podcast and you're liking it you're definitely somebody we want in the roadies and then of course if a fellow roadie invites you we pretty much trust their judgment yeah so, i just i think it's great i haven't seen any stuff we don't like on there lately um, everybody has been playing nice and sharing bourbon, sharing their stories, asking for advice. We had a guy today ask where he could stay at, what distillery, he what's the one distillery he could go to, what what's the best bang for his buck. And a lot of roadies chimed in and helped the guy out, and that's what it's all about. You know, I I love seeing that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Mike, I think we should probably go ahead and take a short break here. All right. And uh, finish off our rabbit hole Derringer. You done finished yours off. Yeah, I'm going to get a little bit more because <laughs> <laughs> I think it's decent. You know, let's let's go ahead and, and, and just say it. In my opinion, you know, this is another fine finished bourbon from the heart of bourbon country that I don't think is going to disappoint anybody. It's not going to blow you away. Uh, but I think it's solid. It's well-rounded. Uh, it was crafted for sure. I mean, there was a lot of attention paid to making this, and I think they did a good job. Beware, the finish is a little short. Yeah, I'm there with you. Would I buy it again? I, I probably wouldn't, but it, I obviously bought it. You know, I'm I'm a guy that would take a chance on a company. Now, I'll buy more rabbit hole in the future. If they can keep coming out with stuff like this, mm-hmm. I'll take another chance mm-hmm. and stuff. And you know how I am about that. I think it's worth a buy. If you have $80 to spend, you know, go out there and get it. Or if you don't try to find it on the shelf or join the roadies, you might get a sample. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right, Mike. Well, when we come back, we'll, we'll see what we have next on the list. All right. like to thank Tommy and Gwen Mitchell from Logheads Home Center for supporting this episode of The Bourbon Road. Logheads Home Center, nestled in the hills of Kentucky, is an industry leader in building handcrafted rustic furniture. Family owned and operated, they take pride in offering only the very best for their customers. The Logheads, and that's what they like to call themselves, are skilled wood crafters who are passionate about creating rustic furniture for people who appreciate the beauty of natural wood. Owners Tommy and Gwen don't just sell the rustic lifestyle, they live it. And you can be sure that Logheads Furniture will always be handcrafted in Kentucky by artisans who embrace the simple way of life. Logheads Rustic Furniture is made from northern white cedar, a sustainable wood that's naturally rot and termite resistant, 
Its beauty and quality will add warmth to your earthy lifestyle for generations to come. Be sure to check out everything they have to offer at logheadshomecenter.com. And while you're at it, give Tommy and Gwen a shout on Facebook or Instagram at Logheads Home Center. All right, well, we are back, and Mike, we are ready for our second finished bourbon of the night. What this is it? This one's actually a triple cask. Okay. Meaning it's triple finished, I guess, or double finished, really. Um, it's Joseph Magnus bourbon, and it's been finished both in a sherry and cognac cask. Okay. So this one's sherry finished as well. But then in addition to that, it's finished in a cognac cask yep. also. Yep. All right. So this is a hundred proof. We don't know the mash bill on this or the distillery, but we're assuming that it's from MGP. It says distilled in Indiana. Well, chances are high. That's what it is. We, not yeah. a total guarantee, but probably decent chance. Pretty, pretty good chance. I would think <laughs> actually it's been finished in two sherries. So it is triple cast. So it's been finished in a Oloroso sherry and then the Pedro. Pedro Menes. Menes sherry cask and then a cognac cask. So it's really been in four barrels. Yeah. So it was aged as a bourbon in barrel number one. Then it was dumped and placed in a Oloroso sherry cask. And then it was dumped and placed in a Pedro Jimenez sherry cask. And then it was dumped and placed in a cognac cask. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work and a lot of loss too, right? Yeah, I would think so. Um, So this bottle was right around $89. That's how much I paid for it. I wouldn't say that's a big boy bourbon, but I could see where that cost has to come from when you're doing that much right there. Now, is this the one you chose that night? It wasn't. I couldn't find that. That was just a cognac cask. I couldn't find that bottle anywhere. I looked for it and looked for it and looked for it. And I was like, well, I'm going to try this right here. I did looked up some reviews on it, looked at their website. And I was like, you know what? I, I think I'll like that. Um, supposedly it's 12 years old. We don't know that exactly, but that's the rumored age of it. Um, it's got a lot of great reviews on it though. Right. Won, Won a couple awards, but everybody wins awards. Yeah. But there are awards and there are awards. Which one did they win? Or which ones did they win? The American Distilling Institute Craft Blended Spirit Competition, San Francisco World Spirits Competition, Best Special Barrel Finished Bourbon. And then they got double gold medal at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition 2019. Okay, so th- these are not just small awards. These guys have done pretty good in the tasting challenges. Yeah, they're they're definitely doing something special. Now, this is a DC brand that was reestablished. So it was originally established in 1892, and they were reestablished in 2015. Okay. Well, Mike, let's get to it. What do you say? Let's do it. Wow. A big, big difference between that nose and the one we had in the first half. Oh, I love that. Yeah, so this one has a lot more of a of a deep, rich bourbon nose to it. You're getting that uh, that heavier oak, that um, that more. And I'm going to say syrupy on the nose again. I do that sometimes. That more syrupy nose that you get. It's much more rich. I'm getting a little bit of a citrusy, like real dark, like a tangerineish nose to it like a candied orange yeah yeah i can see that some marmalade yeah definitely like more like a marmalade i think that that's like it's a good call out mike i'm still getting those floral notes in this as you should would probably with a finished bourbon 12 year old i don't think it's got too much of an oak influence they haven't overdone it at all Uh, you know seeing four different barrels you kind of wonder what might happen and uh, at least as far as the nose is concerned it seems very pleasing. Well, let's taste this thing. Let's do it. Wow, that is really good. That's first and foremost a rich bourbon, a well-aged bourbon. 
that sweetness is coming through with all those finishes, I think. Just a, a hint of cherry on it. Yeah. I'm getting a little bit more of the, the heavier oak tannins. A little bit of that leather and tobacco starting to come out on it. But I'm getting that 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 fruitiness from the barrels. I'm getting a little bit of, uh, you said cherry, didn't you? Mm-hmm. A little bit of cherry. I'm not getting the orange marmalade so much on the palate. No, it doesn't match up per se, but it, it still is a beautiful, beautiful palate on it. A little bit of bitterness in it, though. A little mid-palate bitterness. It seems fine mm-hmm. on the back, though. More of a, you ever eat sweet tarts before? Oh, yeah. It's not sour, but it's got that tartiness. Mm-hmm. This is what that 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 tartiness, I guess, to it. Almost like a green apple tart. Yeah, this is an interesting pour. This would be, I would consider this one a fairly special experience. It's definitely worth, I mean, if you're not going to own a bottle, I would highly suggest that you go have a pour somewhere. Because I think it's worth experiencing. Third Turn Brewing, their uh, bourbon room they have there has this on the shelf. Now, is that the name of the place next door to the Third Turn Brewing? It's owned by them, I think, right? Actually, I've tried to tag them in it in a couple Instagram posts we had or Facebook posts, and I couldn't find a name for that place. I just it's Third Turn Brewing's bourbon room, next door bourbon room, and and they have a pretty darn good selection. Yeah, I thought for as new that as they are, mm-hmm. me and you walked in there, and both of us were kind of wowed by it. I was like, they've got a couple bottles here. Yeah, and, and the prices are reasonable. Yeah, I think, I, I think so. And they actually had a whiskey glass for you to drink from. Yeah. This is, Mike, Mike this is really nice. Um, this is something that, personally, I would like to have on my bar, I think. What's well, out there, Jim? <laughs> I think I might have to go get some. No doubt about it. So this, would, to me, would be, we always talk about it in our reviews, whether it's a mixer, is it a sipper, share with a friend, or a gift. This would be a really nice gift for somebody that's retiring or on a special occasion. Special gift. Oh, yeah. Definitely a special gift. At this price range, you know, if if, if you're going to buy that gift for somebody and that that gift can be in the $100 range, this wouldn't be a bad choice. Yeah, I've tried to recommend this to a couple of people before. They're like, oh, that's a little bit of money. Um, to me, I'm, we're both at that point in our life or we won't bat our eye at a bottle like this. Um, I think it's a great bottle and stuff. I would like to bring up uh, somebody in our roadies called me out about my cereal tasting notes. They did. What did they say? <laughs> well, they said I took a dart and I just throw it up at that poster of cereal boxes. And that's where I get my tasting notes from. <laughs> um, and I'd like to say that my tasting notes are mine. I didn't. I don't. I don't per se come from that tasting wheel. That everybody else does. And I know you don't either. We kind of pride ourselves in that. And we take it from life's experiences. And we try to tell others to do that same thing. Don't always go to that whiskey wheel all the time. Then because everybody's tasting notes or reviews sound exactly the same. Oh, it's caramel. And it's oak. And it's vanilla. And it's leather. And tobacco. You know, it, there's nothing wrong with saying, man, this I had a candy. And it tasted like this candy. Right. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I Absolutely. don't feel like there is. And we kind of mm. use both, right? I mean, we'll use both kinds of notes yeah. when we're talking about it. But a lot of times, if if there's some memory of this just jerking that flavor, you know, out of that whiskey you're drinking and saying, hey, you know, this is this is whorehound candy or whatever it is. Yeah, you got to speak it. You got to speak it, Mike. I, I tried try to speak the truth. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. Somebody called me out on that and uh, said I threw a dart at the cereal. I didn't know how to take it, really. I was like, hmm, man, that stung a little bit. But, hey, I welcome you to come hang out with me and see how we do it. Or see your cereal collection. Yeah, we don't have a – Vivian will kill me if we have cereal in this house. (laughs) It's bad for me. It's what she says. Well, then that means you're going off some definite old memories, huh? Not that old memories and stuff. You know, we're not that far from not having kids in the house. And whenever you have a teenage boy in the house, they can go through boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes of cereal. As in when I did the episode with my son, he even said he loves, he loves some cereal. And 
The last one I remember was Count Chocula. Count Chocula. That's the one you talked about in one. I don't remember which one it was, though. It'll leave you that brown milk that you got to drink at work <laughs> afterwards. It's good. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I think this is a great bourbon. Um, great, great pour for both of us and stuff. You know, I I was excited this year that I thought the Barstown Bourbon Festival was going to happen. And we I sit down with Steve Coombs and we had talked about that. And I've I've seen him since that episode and we we talked about it. And he, I said, do you still think it's going to happen? And he's like, I don't know if it's going to happen now. But now, you know, they, they're they going to go to that virtual reality on that. And that was like the last big chance for there to be a an actual event in Kentucky. Yeah, so all the hometown rising and – Bourbon and Beyond and all that stuff got canceled out. The, you know, the Bardstown Bourbon Festival now. The, you know, the, the rest of the those those events that happened around the other big events in Louisville are all canceled now. I don't know what's next, Mike. Well, Christmas they're going to cancel Christmas on us, Jim. How can they cancel Christmas? I don't know. No shopping at the store. Well. I would think there'd be, you'd still be able to shop, but what about Santa Claus for kids going to see Santa Claus? Did you ever go see Santa Claus as a kid? Santa Claus is banned due to COVID. I bet you money that's what's going to happen. Or maybe not. Who knows? Maybe maybe everything's, maybe there's a vaccine by then. I hope so because, you know, I feel like next year I would like to go to the New Orleans Bourbon Festival. If we can. And then get back on the road more and stuff. We, we're we actually going to get on the road in a couple episodes, and we're going to go up and see our, our friends up at New Riff. Yeah, that'll be good. The I called, I, I said today when I was talking to them, I said, you know, you guys are the uh, popular kid on the block right now. You see all these pics coming out from New Riff. So I'm excited to see what they have going on up there. Speaking of pics, won't be long, right? It shouldn't be long. A couple more weeks, maybe. Probably right around the time this is coming out, maybe a week after that. You should see our pick coming out. Pretty excited about that. Heck yeah, we both are. Um, <laughs> yeah, if, if you're just keep your nose into the roadies, if you like we talked about before, if you're listening to us, you probably want to join up and be part of the roadies. Um, and that's the only two places you can get it is on the roadies. And at the uh, Paradise Liquor and Wine from James, our buddy over there. But that's our first pick. Road pick number one, right? Road pick number one. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, Mike. Bourbon Heritage Month 2020. Kind of a big letdown. Really missed doing a lot of the things that we would have been doing as part of that celebration. You know, what we would have done in Bardstown, what we would have done in Louisville. Frankfurt, all around here. We would have had a lot of places to go, a lot of things to do, all been kind of canceled, all been relegated to online events. And uh, you know what? I just hope, I pray that next year, same time, same place, everything's back to normal. Man, you'd hope so, right? Um, For the sake of the craft distilleries out there, especially, they need that tourism money. The city of Louisville is just hurting for for money right now and that tourism money is is definitely a big thing for them you know you think everybody that comes to the bourbon trail most of them stay downtown louisville yeah and uh make that kind of their hub or they'll stay over in lexington and make that their hub but there are good things coming out of this it gives the, i think the bourbon companies it gives the towns that time if you haven't been to the bourbon trail in a while and you go to barstown now there's three or four more hotels there to stay at yeah, people have had. There's more distilleries to go to. There's distilleries opening up over in Lexington. There's distilleries. Um, the Dant family is going to open up their distillery. It might take a little bit. There's a distillery just just north of us, up in uh, Eminence. That'll be or Pleasureville. That'll be opening up. So a lot more distilleries will be here when you come back to the Bourbon Trail. More Put it hotels. on your calendar. Come on back. Yeah, come back if you're at Roadies. Shoot us a line, say, hey, I want to stop by and have a drink with you guys. Absolutely. Well, Mike, you know, even though things are different, things are not quite the way we expect, we're still getting those 
fall releases that are happening. So if you're getting some special bottles out there, things that uh, you've been looking, looking forward to all year, make sure you come in the roadies, pour a little bit in the bourbon road, Glen Karen, take a picture of it. Let us see. Uh, let us see what your, your prize has been this week or, or next. We'd love to see some of those bottles. Wouldn't we? Yeah. I think that's, you know, even now we, both of us are getting some bottles that we, we both wanted or coveted, I guess. Um, I've actually gotten a couple this year that I hadn't had before, and I was excited about that. Yeah, just share share your love with everybody. Share your pictures and stuff. Um, share what you're getting. I think you'll you'll see that the roadies they they dig that stuff. Absolutely. Well, Mike, everybody can find us on the social medias at thebourbonroad dot com. That includes Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Am I missing any? Our website. Our website, thebourbonroad.com. You can come to thebourbonroad.com and you can listen to our podcast there. You can read the blog. Mike usually writes those. He does a fine job. Uh, we've got probably got close to 100 articles in there, uh, as well as um, some Glen Cairns. You can come by with the Bourbon Road on them. We love to see those picks in the, in the roadies, don't we? Yeah. So our, if you haven't notice that we've been talking a lot about that this episode but the bourbon roadies is our private facebook group you can just type that in that search bar you can look up the bourbon roadies ask to join three questions in there ask those three questions the only thing we don't do is we don't sell whiskey in there and we don't tolerate any rudeness you know that's just us we like everybody to play nice so come in there and join us have a good time while you're at all that you're listening to this and if you like that ep- this episode then scroll up to the top hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. That's what our sponsors are for. And boy, does it help us. It, it definitely does. And then if you're going to go ahead and help us that way, just go on down and leave us that review. Now, if you're going to leave us a one-star review, tell us what we can do better to fix that and keep you as a listener. We definitely want to keep you as a listener, right, Jim? That's right. Absolutely. But we'd hope you'd leave us a five-star review, but still tell us what we can do. Me and Jim will try to do it for you absolutely and we do two of these shows a week you'll hear us on mondays we'll be reviewing some craft distillery sometimes a big boy uh, but that's our review day and we do like a 15 minute review of a whiskey uh, usually it's a craft like i said usually it's a craft whiskey but not always and then every wednesday we release a full length episode one hour in length where uh, we either interview somebody have somebody on the show of interest or it's just mike and i like today just chatting and talking about what's going on in the bourbon world uh, we'd love to have you listen to us a couple times a week and tell your friends about us. And, uh, you know, you never know if you're out there, you're touring those distilleries, you're hitting those bottle shops, you may just run into one of us. That's most definitely true. So you can find me at one big chief on Instagram. I'm Jay Shannon 63 and we'll see you on down the bourbon road. <laughs> appreciate all of our listeners and we'd like to thank you for taking time out of your day to hang out with us here on the bourbon road we hope you enjoyed today's show and if so we would appreciate if you'd subscribe and rate us a five star with a review on itunes make sure you follow us on facebook twitter and instagram at the bourbon road that way you'll be kept in the loop on all the bourbon road happenings you can also visit our website at the to read our blog listen to the show or reach out to us directly We always welcome comments or suggestions. And if you have an idea for a particular guest or topic, be sure to let us know. And again, thanks for hanging out with us. 